We've had a full week of hunting and cooking. It's just been incredible. These episodes are gonna be for the Armed Forces Entertainment. On this particular one, we're gonna be doing some awesome meals today, really traditional sides that I grew up with for celebration of Black History Month. So we're gonna be doing something like collard greens, a cornbread, the black eyed peas, my mac and cheese. And then for a protein, we're gonna be cooking a brisket. And I'm gonna show you how to trim this brisket up. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on cooking it. So let's get into it. My name is Mo Kaysan. I love barbecue, that's my MO. Managing a fire, flavors, textures, smells. I always was fascinated by it. I'm out here with my buddy Bob. I am Barbecue Bob Trudnack. Thrilled to be here. Woo! I like shooting. <laughs> and I like hunting. Click, click. Heart was just pounding. Look at it shaking, it's awesome. We're gonna do a little pheasant hunting. I got that. Ah. <laughs> What's up, boy? Get the hell out of here. You caught a fish already. Take your butt back to Pennsylvania, boy. Learn cooking techniques, recipes, how to fill strip a deer, and even prep wild turkey. It's going to be a great experience. We're going to do it most style. Welcome back. I'm here with my buddy Bob Trudnack. For a protein, we're gonna be cooking a brisket. This is about a 17 pound packer. Um, if you did not know the difference between a packer and a flat, a packer is a complete brisket that has the flat and the point. And I'm gonna show you how to trim this brisket up. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on cooking it. Bob and I both do a lot of competitions over the years, and so I'm actually gonna do some extra things like putting an injection through it. It's not necessary but it's one of those things that will help enhance this brisket. So let's get into it. This is an E3 Ranch, beautiful uh, prime brisket. This is how you're gonna really get them when you go to the box store. It's cleaned up nicely, but you're gonna do some additional trimming on it to get the excess fat that's off of here. The reason why you remove excess patches of fat is because once you uh, put rub on this brisket and put it in the cooker, this has a tendency to not allow the rub to here to the meat. So we're gonna get in here, start trimming. So this is the flat side of the brisket. This is where the slices come from. So he's gonna make sure he gets all the heavy fat off this side, get it seasoned up nice. And then he'll move around to the point side, remove some of the fat on that side too, and that's where you typically get your burn ends and your, your little cubes of meat. On this brisket, you're gonna have a large patch of hard fat. That's this right here. That will never render out during the cook. I don't care if you had a brisket in there for 20 hours, it's not gonna render out. It'll get soft, but then it won't render out and that's, you don't wanna be biting on that. There's a piece of fat here you can leave on, but I like to remove on the edge of the brisket going into the deco that you wanna remove and give you a clean face. Sometimes you leave this piece of fat here like this and you can see all these crevices, that brisket's gonna to wanna to crack off when you get it done. You get close to over 200 degrees and then now you got a brisket slice that starts breaking off at the ends. So when you do this, you're actually cleaning the face of the brisket and you're starting fresh. I will trim all the fat off the point end. Now that's not necessary, but if you want to do what it's called burn ends and make burn ends, well, you want to clean this fat off the bottom end of this point. That allows you to build a bark formation all around that point. If you didn't, this will be a big fatty piece on the bottom and you'll never get any bark formation because it's the fat, I mean, the meat's being covered by the fat. If you want to do burn ends, one of the tips that I can give you is taking, there's a fat seam that's between the flat and the point. I'll come in with my knife and I'll follow that fat seam down. So I'll come in here with my knife and I'll clean that up and take off the excess fat on the top of this point. And then you come in at the end of the cook and you just slice that point off and you can cube up the point, put it in sauce, put it back on the pit and you can actually make true burn ends. You can't get burn ins from the flat. That'll just be cubed flat. The next thing you want to do is you always want to cut against the grain when cooking a brisket. That's going to give you your best tender slice. You can see the grain of the brisket. It's running this way. You always want to cut against the grain. Take your knife and bam. At the end of the cook, you'll be able to see it. And you can slice all the way through the flat. Perfect guide. Well, now we have our brisket all trimmed up. The next step we're going to be doing is adding the enhancements for the brisket. 
One of the things I like to do is I like to put a marinade on the outside of the brisket. And this is called Claude's marinade. You can, it's from Texas. You can get it in a lot of grocery stores. You can get it on Amazon. But what this does, this just adds another flavor note to that brisket that complements the beef. I just pour a little bit in my hand and just kind of massage it throughout the brisket. I do it on the point. Ooh, it's looks got, good. It's got a wonderful smell to it. It really does. And that's it. I just put a little coat on there. I know it's going to be doing its, its part because you can already see it's already staining the meat. Yeah. So it's already adhering to all the muscle fibers. The next thing I want to do is I will inject the brisket. Now, injecting a brisket is completely unnecessary. You don't have to do it, but there is benefit of injection. This is just some beef injection at a supplier out of uh, Oklahoma. One of my tips is when you are injecting a brisket, try to use the smallest gauge needle as possible. I go to the farm and fleet stores and I'll get an 18 gauge. The bigger the hole, the more opportunity for that juice to work its way out through the cooking process. There's gonna be brisket squirting out like it did on Bob, just like that again. And, uh, but that's just the part, it's barbecue. And now I'm gonna let this brisket, I'm gonna put it back in the refrigerator and we're gonna let this sit for about six hours and let the injection do its work. And what the injection's gonna do is it'll start thickening up a little bit and really cause those, those, those injections to stay in that position to help those muscle fibers. And then you'll season it after the rest. Yeah, so once I get done after six hours of letting this injection sit, that's when I go to the next step and that's when I add my oil and that's when I add my rub to it. And then I let it sit for an hour after that and then it goes onto the pit. It's a process. Exactly. Now we are uh, ready to season the brisket. This brisket sat injected for six hours. Now it's time to put a coat of rub on. What I do with all my proteins, ribs, pork butts, I always use a coat of canola oil. It lays really nice on the meat and then allows the rub to adhere perfectly, have a beautiful consistency of rub on the meat. So I'll take uh, some of my beef rub. Uh, this has, this is completely different from my Texas brisket rub being that it has a few more uh, savory elements like coriander. And uh, so I like to add just a nice little light coat of that on the brisket. And you know, brisket's a big piece of meat, so it can handle a good amount of seasoning. Yeah. It's not like when you're seasoning ribs or chicken, you know, it's a big piece of meat, so it can certainly hold up to a good amount of seasoning on there. I would let this brisket sit at room temperature for an hour to allow the rub and the moisture from the meat to kind of bleed through the rub and start to set, and then it's ready for the pit. So, Bob, our brisket's been sitting on the counter for an hour. Yes, sir. Now it's ready for the pit. Okay. Right on there. You know, now we have our brisket season. We got them on the pits. This is something that I grew up with as a child to adulthood. I was raised by cooking collard greens. I like to use smoked turkey legs. You take some uh, water and some chicken stock. I put the turkey legs in there. These are already cooked smoked turkey legs. So all we're doing is we're gonna get these up to a rolling boil and we're gonna let them simmer and cook. We're gonna be cooking these until the turkey meat pulls away from the bone. We're gonna take the turkey legs out and we're actually gonna debone them. And then we're gonna incorporate the meat back into the broth. And then we're gonna season it up with onions and celery that we have rendered some baking fat off. We cook the onions and celery until the onions become translucent. And then I'm gonna incorporate these, this mixture into the stock. All this does is just add more flavor to the collard greens. You can use whatever seasoning you want. I'm a big fan of using my pork rub. It's got salt, it's got pepper, it's kind of bold. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna add. And collard greens, it's all about the stock. And what you wanna do is, as you get the meat and uh, rendering out and pulling away and putting the stock back together, you're gonna taste it. And you're gonna make adjustments generally. You kind of taste it throughout the process and get it exactly where you want. Exactly. So we'll take the onions, we're gonna put it here in this bacon grease, and then we're gonna saute these bad boys until they, until the onions become translucent. So now we're at the stage to where we're gonna take these turkey legs out and we're gonna debone them. Discard all the cartilage, hard pieces, the undesirable pieces, and then uh, we're gonna incorporate that back into the stock. And with collard green stock, it's all about tasting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've done this a million times, so I kinda know what I want but you still make adjustments. I've got my turkey all deboned. I'm gonna actually add this back, and it's there. 
Now I'm gonna add a little bit of red pepper flakes. Depending on how sparse you want it, you know, I'd go with a couple tablespoons. Now I'm gonna add my collards. And the key with collards is you do not want to cook them down to the consistency of spinach. You just put the lid on, turn the heat down to a low simmer, and just slowly cook these greens down. All right, we got our collard greens cooking down, getting right. The next dish we're gonna do is black eyed peas and sausage. This is something that we make at our house every holiday. It's simple, but it's so, so good. We got some Jimmy Dean hot sausage. And what we're gonna do is we are going to take this sausage and we're gonna make little small balls. I'm excited about this dish. I've never even heard of it. This is the way that my mother did it, and uh, that's how we do it at home. Kind of like that? Yep. My meatball making machine. I see. And we're gonna put them in the skillet here. And we're gonna brown these so they get a good color on them. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna incorporate these in some black eyed peas. Now normally, I'll use uncooked uh, black eyed peas and just slowly make a stock and cook them all day long. But for time's sake, we have already cooked canned black eyed peas, which is fine. Already smells good, but uh, it sure does, man. Garlic, onion, and spicy sausage. Mm. Oh Perfect. Once I have the sausages browned the way I want to, I'm going to take these sausages and I'm going to incorporate them in the black eyed peas. And then I'm going to let them simmer for a few hours, just slowly letting all the flavors meld in with the black eyed peas. Sounds good. Last but not least. Last but not least, I'm going to add a little bit of that low case on beef rub. It's just a, give me that little bit more garlic, a little more black pepper, and that's it. And things when cooking like this, southern cooking, you just got to taste it. Mm -hmm. It needs a little bit more salt, there's more black pepper, a little more garlic, you just add it. And that's it. There you have it. So we got our briskets cooking. They've been on for a few hours now, right, Bob? Yep. Looking really good, getting that smoke, that flavor. Now we're going to make an additional side to go with this fantastic brisket we're gonna to have tonight. This is my jalapeno cornbread. It's amazing. Simple, but good. So all you need is, you need some cornmeal, flour, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, Blend the dry ingredients together. And once you have done that, cream corn. Mm, good trick. Just incorporate the cream corn well with the uh, dry ingredients. I'm gonna add some milk now. Whole milk? Whole milk. The key with this cornbread too, do not overmix. Because if you overmix, you have a potential of making this cornbread instead of fluffy and moist to be, have, be more condensed. And you don't want that. A couple eggs. And then I got some cheddar cheese. I got some onion and jalapenos. Good, hearty flavors, man. Savory. And you just kind of fold these in. Don't get crazy. And that's it. Now we have a greased half pan. You can do it in the oven, you can do it on the smoker. I'm putting this in my GMG pellet cooker, 350 degrees, and we're gonna cook it for about 20 minutes. We're gonna check it. In 20 minutes, you take a toothpick and stick it in the center of this cornbread. If the toothpick comes out still wet, it still needs a little more time. All right, guys, we got the cornbread done. We got the black eyed peas done. The collard greens are done. Now we're getting to that holy grill level, and that is the hot pepper mac and cheese. Ooh. This recipe was designed by my wife. It's awesome, it's rich, it's decadent, it's, cream. it's everything. So what you have is two pounds of macaroni noodles. Now, I've got it up on high, I got a little salt in there, I'm gonna bring these to a boil. And then once I do that, I'm gonna start incorporating this cheese and all this goodness in there. So the first step you wanna do is take seven eggs, stick of butter, um, heaved up, cup of sour cream. And this will just give it that, that creamy richness that you want in a mac and cheese. This ain't no box macaroni and cheese. This is a real deal. 
and three quarters cup of milk. Now what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to try to whisk all this up. You just want to try to get everything kind of somewhat blended. I know there's chunks of butter in there, but that'll all melt out during the cooking process. Now once these noodles get up to al dente, meaning that they're still a little firm, but they're not crunchy. That's what you want. Because they're, the, as, as I add the cheese and everything in it, I'm putting it in the pan and I'm gonna actually cook it even more. I'm gonna cook it for maybe 30, 35 minutes at 350 degrees. When I get the noodles al dente, I'm gonna have Bob incorporate the cheese into the mixture. Uh, I'm, I'm going deer hunting. You're going deer hunting? Yeah, you, you, can, you put, can you do that for me? You know what? See you, bud. Okay. <laughs> We're at the point now, the noodles are al dente. I'm adding my hot pepper cheese. And what you want to do is you want to drain the noodles off. And um, as the noodles are still remaining hot, that's when you want to incorporate the cheese because that's the heat is what's going to melt this cheese. But <clears throat> my extra pair of hands decided to go out and try to get a buck. And I don't blame him because I got mine yesterday. Now you take your egg mixture and you slowly incorporate it. Just kind of make sure all the noodles get a little bit of that sauce around it. Pretty much all the noodles saturated with that good creamy mix. Now, I'll come in here with my beef rub. And I'll just put a light coat. Simple, not heavy. That's it. Then I'm gonna take my cheddar cheese. There we go. Now she's ready for the oven or the smoker. We got the oven set at 350. I'm gonna put this mac and cheese in it. I'm gonna cook it for about 30 minutes. See when I, when I separated the two, with the flat and the point, see how they come apart? This is the flat, this is the point. I'll be able to take this out when this brisket's done and cube this up and make burn ends, which we will do. A little oil, and just, just a little dusting of rub. Goes back in. I take my probe. And I can tell already she's probably 185. Guessing 183. See, as you cook a lot of brisket, you can kind of tell by the feel. At 200 degrees, that's when the collagen starts to break down on the briskets. There's a certain point to where they start to break down and get soft. Once these briskets reach 203 and they both feel great, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to put them in a dry cooler and they're going to sit for two to three hours. That is the magic point of cooking a great brisket is letting it rest. That is the point. This is where if I want to make burn-ins, I'll cut this in one-inch cube, sauce it up, put it back on the pit, which I am going to make burn-ins out of it, but I'm just going to sauce it up. 